In the IELTS reading section, there are 11 different question types you may be given. And for each question type, there are different tips and strategies that you should be aware of that will help you find the answer. So in today's video, I am going to explain each of these 11 question types, and then I'm going to provide you with the top things you need to consider when you are looking for the answers in the IELTS reading section. So have a look at some of the basics of the IELTS reading section. The IELTS reading section lasts for about 60 minutes, and you will be required to answer 40 questions within these 60 minutes. And the 40 questions will be divided uh, between three different passages that you will be given. So it's very important that you know how exactly to organize your time between the 60 minutes. And within these 40 questions, you will see 11 different question types for each question that you are given. And so in today's video, I'm going to explain every single question type you may see in IELTS reading section as well as how exactly you can find the answer for each question type. So the first question type you may see is a multiple choice question. So within the multiple choice question, you will be required to select the best answer within those four different answers the question is asking. So you need to make sure you find the best answer within the pa passage, but you need to keep in mind that you do not have any time time to read the passage word for word. You need to make sure you skim and scan the text and highlight any particular keywords that stand out uh, in the question and then look for it in the passage. While you are going through the passage, remember that most likely the first question and the second question will be found in the top uh, paragraph of the passage and the answers to the last questions will most likely be found within the bottom of the passage. So let's have a look at this multiple choice question. So the best way is to first look at the uh, passage and see if you could recognize any keywords from the questions in the passage. It's always good to eliminate the questions that are not right first, so then that way this will help you find the answer. If you are able to cross out the ones that are not right, then you know the remaining one will be the answer you were looking for. The reason we do this is because this will help us find the correct answer and what exactly we are looking for. So have a look at this sample multiple choice question. The question asks, the writer suggests that people may have difficulty sleeping in the mountains because A, humans do not prefer peace and quiet to noise. B, they may be exposed to short bursts of very strange sounds. C, humans prefer to hear a certain amount of noise while they sleep. D, they may have adapted to a higher noise level in the city. So have a look at this paragraph where this question is located. So the paragraph says, in general, it is plausible to suppose that we should prefer peace and quiet to noise. And yet, most of us have had the experience of having to adjust to sleep in the mountains or the countryside because it was initially too quiet an experience that suggests that humans are capable of adapting to a wide range of noise levels. So let's go down the list. Does it say anything about humans do not prefer peace and quiet? So A says humans do not prefer peace and quiet to noise. So if we look at the paragraph, it actually says humans are capable of adapting to a wide range of noise levels. So this means that humans can actually initially uh, be able to adapt to noise levels. So A is not the answer. B, they may be exposed to short bursts of very strange sound. So in this paragraph, there's nothing here that says anything about strange sounds or short bursts. So the answer is not B. 
So C says that humans prefer to hear a certain amount of noise while they sleep. So if you see here, we are talking about it being too quiet in the countryside. So the answer is not C. So let's see D. They, have ha they may have adapted to a higher noise level in the city. So there's the answer, guys. D is the answer because it says that people have had to adapt to a higher noise level in the city versus the countryside because the countryside is way too quiet. So the answer is D for this multiple choice question. So before we find the answer for this multiple choice question, I want to let you know that you do not need to read the entire passage to find the answer. Rather, you need to try to locate certain keywords in certain paragraphs. Then you need to skim over that particular paragraph to see if you can find the answer. Most likely, question one will be found within the top portion of the passage and the last questions will most likely be found within the bottom half of the passage. So letter D was the answer to this question because they are just using different words but talking about the same concept. That's why it's so important that you become familiar with synonym language and how exactly a sentence could be reworded saying the same same thing. So the second question type you may see in the IELTS reading section is a true false not given question. Now make sure you continue watching because I will explain the difference between true false not given question uh, compared to yes no not given question. These are very similar but they are not the same question type you may see. So have a look at this sample uh, true false not given question. So the question says Ants use the same channels of communication as humans do. So let's have a look at the exact passage where this question is located. Ants store food, repel attackers, and use chemical signals to contact one another in case of attack. Such chemical communication can be compared to the human use of visual and auditory change. So what you need to do for this question type is you need to look at the statement in the answer and then you need to compare it to the statement in the passage that you are looking for. And you need to ask yourself, are these statements contradicting each other or are they saying the same thing? If you look at the statement and compare it to the passage and it says the same thing, that means that the answer is true. But if you look at the statement and compare it to the passage and the answer is not written at all, that means the answer is false. Or if you look at the statement and you compare it to the passage and the answer is completely different, that means the answer is not given. So one thing to keep in mind is while you are looking for your answers, don't base the answers on what you think is correct. Make sure you choose the answer that you find that is correct within the passage. Guys, remember this. Also, one thing to remember is that the true, false, not given question, the answers do not go in order, meaning you will not find the answer to question one, then question two, then question three. Throughout the passage, they are actually all scattered throughout the passage. So you need to keep that in mind because you may find the answer to question one in paragraph two and then the answer to question two in paragraph one. So just remember that. So the paragraph says, ants store food, repel attackers, and use chemical signals to contact one another in case of attack. Such chemical communication can be compared to the human use of visual and auditory channels, as in religious chants, advertising images, and jingles political slogans, and martial music to arouse the propagate moods and attitudes. So uh, let's look at uh, the paragraph I just read and pick up the word, the keywords that may be mentioned throughout this 
to find the answer. So it says communication and channels. Such chemical communication can be compared to the human use of visual and auditory channels. So when you look at the sentence, such chemical communication can be compared uh, to the human use of visual and auditory channels, that means that something is being compared and that means it's not the same. So question one, once again, says ants use the same channel of communication as humans do. Same and compared are opposite of each other. So that means the answer to number one is false. So the third type of question you may see in your IELTS reading section is the sentence completion question. This question is quite straightforward. So what you need to do for this question type is you need to make sure you read the instructions for the question. Make sure that you understand what the question is asking for the sentence completion. Then you need to make sure you highlight any particular keywords that stand out to you. So have a look at these sample questions. Some people choose expensive premises because they want to create an impressive blank for their company. Number two, businesses which depend on blank need to be on or near the principal shopping areas. So we are going to try to find the answer to these two questions. So have a look at this uh, paragraph. Ironically, some firms swing too far from the other direction, committing themselves to a heavy initial outlay because they believe in the importance of image. And that does not come cheap. So the question we are looking for says some people choose expensive premises because they want to create an impressive blank for their company. So once again, let's read uh, the exact paragraph ironically some firms swing too far in the other direction committing themselves to a heavy initial outlay because they believe in the importance of image and that does not come cheap so what words here that stick out to me are expensive in the question because expensive is a synonym word for not cheap which is which is does not come cheap, which is written in the passage. And um, the answer, uh, the question says, because they want to create an, ex an impressive blank for their company. So creating an impressive something means that you want to make sure that you create something that makes people turn their heads and say, wow, that looks really nice or wow that's a very beautiful business so what is an what is a word that sticks out in the sentence that makes people go wow pretty much and the word here's uh the answer to 15 is image the importance of image because uh, having an image of something that's beautiful once again makes people turn their heads and think it's a very um established business or a very very uh eye appealing business so the answer to number 15 is image so the question 16 says businesses which depend on blank need to be on or near the principal shopping areas so the keywords for this question i would say are depend on need to be on or near and principal shopping area so let's see if we can highlight any words that stick out in the passage that may have these particular keywords that we have indicated in the question bank high street premises are important for shops which rely on passing trade but these are expensive rents fall quickly within a few meters of main roads offices however need to be need not be located centrally particularly if most business if most business is done on the phone or via email 
So once again, question 16 asks, businesses which depend on blank need to be on or near the principal shopping areas. So the answer to question 16 is passing trade. The answer is passing trade because here high street premises is another word for principal shopping areas and rely on is a synonym word for depend on. So the answer is passing trade. So pretty much remember that the sentence completion uh, question is asking you to find the same information that is written in the passage but just in a different way it's not a trick question but you just need to make sure that you are good in synonym language and that you are able to identify different words that mean the same thing in the passage so the fourth question type is summary completion. So I want you to take a look at this particular summary completion question. And I want you to look at the passage on the left that we are going to discuss. So a summary completion question is pretty much a paraphrase of what exactly uh, the passage talks about, but summarizing the main points. So what you need to do for this type of question is you need to look at exactly what uh, the summary says, highlight any particular keywords that may help you find the answer and look for those keywords in the passage first. Once you find those keywords, then you should quickly skim and scan that particular paragraph to see if you can locate the answer. So as you see here throughout the answers, all the questions are just paraphrased and synonym language is used. Remember that synonym language is something that's that you will see a lot in the IELTS exam. So you need to make sure you try to improve in, in your ability to identify synonym language, because if you don't trust me, this is going to be a very challenging exam for you. The fifth question type you may see is the match sentence endings. In this question type, you are required to find the answers to the end of the sentence that are located in the passage. You need to match the endings to the correct subject. So what you need to do is you need to first obviously read the questions first and then try to locate them in the passage. Read the paragraph first, just quickly skim and skim. Then you need to look at each question ending and you need to compare it to the sentence in the paragraph. So what you have to do in this question type is you need to find the subject and match it to the predicate. Then you need to look at the paragraph and see exactly what it's talking about to see if they match together. So have a look at this match sentence endings question as an example for you to get an idea of what type of question type this is. So the sixth question type you may see is the short answer question. So in the short answer question, you need to pay attention to the instructions, especially if the, if the instructions say to write no more than two words or no more than one word, make sure you listen to those instructions. Do not write over the word limit the question is saying. You need to make sure you pay attention to this because if you don't and you write more than the word limit, your answer will be wrong. So take a look at the sample short answer question. So the seventh question type you may see is the yes, no, not given question. In this question, you need to make sure you don't get confused between the true false not given and the yes, no, not given. They are very similar, but they are totally different. So the true false not given question usually highlights all the facts that are written, whereas the yes no not given question actually highlights certain p opinions throughout the passage. So these are the differences between true false and yes no not given. So the trick to the yes, no, no, not given question is that you need to read the passage and see if the sentence 
and uh, the the statement in the question that's asking you contradicts itself or matches each other if it contradicts itself then you know the answer is no meanwhile if the if the answer matches the passage and the question and the question then you know the answer is yes but if the answer is not included at all in the passage then you know the answer is not given so not given means there was not enough information provided to say if it was yes or no. So the eighth question type is the match headings question. So the match headings questions does not go in order, meaning that you will not find the answer to question one in paragraph A and then question two in paragraph B. The answers will be scattered all throughout um, the passage. So you need to make sure that you are able to find the answers throughout the passage and identify them. So for the match headings question, you need to read the paragraph paragraph you could just skim it quickly and you need to think of a good heading that would match this particular paragraph this will help you try to understand which heading actually matches this paragraph and what exactly it's talking about so from the list of the headings that are actually written in the question, just one of them will actually match that particular paragraph. So think of which one would match the paragraph and try to come up with the best solution. So the trick to this particular question type is to first look at the passage and then look at the headings. That way you get an, a general overview of what, of what each paragraph was about so you are able to match it with the headings in the question. One thing I want to remind you that it's important that you continuously skim through the entire passage even if you think you found the answer because that may have just been a trick for you to think it's the answer but the answer actually comes later in the passage so just remember to quickly skim throughout the entire passage before making a decision of what the answer is so question type number nine is the match information question so the match information question is actually similar to the match headings question but the match headings question actually summarizes the entire paragraph and asks you to find the best suited um, heading for that particular paragraph. Meanwhile, the match information question is actually about a specific information that's written in the paragraph and you have to identify that specific information. In other words, it's basically asking you what paragraph has the information you are looking for. For this question type, I also recommend that you first look at the passage paragraph for paragraph and then you look at the questions. That way you are able to identify what uh, each paragraph is generally about and then if you look at the questions, then it would be a lot easier to find the answers. So guys, we're at question type 10. Now comes the match features question. In the match features question type, you are required to look at the statement and find uh, the person and match the person's name to the statement that the question is asking. Pretty much what statement did each person say and you have to circle that particular person's name to that uh, heading. So you need to make sure you skim through the passage for the people's name paragraph by paragraph, trying to find who said what throughout each paragraph. And guys, the 11th question type you may see is called the diagram labeling question. This question type, you will be actually given a diagram and a passage. So you need to make sure that you are able to fill in the blanks throughout the diagram and the answers are written in the passage. Although this question type looks a bit intimidating, it's quite easy and it's just like a fill in the blanks type of question. So now that you know the 11 question types you may be given on the IELTS reading section, have a look at these most important IELTS reading tips that I provide to all my students that have helped them score a high band in their IELTS exam.